are listening, are listening to, the to the What the, the Wrestling, wrestling Podcast, podcast the, show the show that brings you all, you all things wrestling, wrestling with your with host, host RJV. Oh, you already know what time it is. Perfect. Monday Night Raw. This is your review coming to you live from New York City. What the hell was CM Punk doing back there? Surprise, motherfucker. I don't know, but we'll get into it. A lot to get into. Monday Night Raw review, as always, here at What The Wrestling. Let us not waste any more time. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Tis I, y'all, JD here. Welcome to What The Wrestling, the show that brings you all things wrestling. I am your host, RJD here. Welcome Man, we got a lot going on Monday Night Raw last night had Actually, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good show. I know. Surprise, motherfucker. Doesn't happen often, especially with Vince in charge. Don't care what nobody say. We know he's definitely in charge of Monday Night Raw. Heard there were some last minute script changes. You know, that's a Vince-ism that happens. But Last night's show was actually pretty good. We had some further storytelling with the bloodline. That's always a positive thing. And looks like Mr. Bunny is going to be fighting Priest. Not in a tag match, but mano a mano one-on-one. So, a lot to get into. Let's first start with CM Punk. But before we do, hit the goddamn like button. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. You have the ticker across the bottom of your screen. What the wrestling? Hit the like button. Don't be shy. Just do it. Perfect. Just do it. One more time. Just do it. Perfect. Hit the like button. All right. Let's get into this CM Punk fiasco. So apparently CM Punk was at Monday Night Raw last night as it was in Chicago. Uh, he was coming home from he was coming home from somewhere, and he saw a bunch of wrestlers on this flight on to Chicago. So, showed up to Monday Night Raw and shook some hands, kissed some babies. Supposedly, some reports are he made amends to some people and treat was treated very well. And you have some reports saying that people wasn't really feeling him being there, and they wished he wouldn't have came. Now. Supposedly he made up he made up with the Miz for you know their little back and forth on Twitter years ago. He shook Triple H's hand. Triple H reportedly said, Well, let me see if it's cool for you to stay. Let me talk to the big guy, him being Vince. Vince was like, please get him the hell out of there. Get the fuck out of here! And escorted him and asked him to leave. And he got escorted out of the building with no problems. They asked him to leave. He left. Cool. Uh, Not surprising being that they had a lawsuit pending against each other for a very long time. Years ago. Yeah. Not surprised at that one bit. So. But what I am surprised about is that Punk was even there in the first place. Now, I don't think it was a big deal. I don't think he had a secret meeting. I don't think he's leaving AEW. I don't think he's joining WWE. I don't think he's doing any of those fabrica- uh, fabricated things. He's stupid. Punk ain't going nowhere. He's on the contract. Even if he wanted to, he couldn't. So it is what it is. But, A, I think he knows it'll get people talking. And B, he was in the neighborhood... Obviously, he lives in Chicago, most likely. He was in a neighborhood in, f- in full view of everybody else. He was probably just like, you know what? Screw it. Let me go to Monday Night Raw and see what happens. What's going to happen? Maybe he did really want to make amends. Maybe this is all just free publicity that Punk gets to get. But I don't think it's that deep. Everybody talking about 
uh, these secret meetings that he was having and he's going to AEW. It's like, what are we talking about? It's, it's like, it's goofy. Don't be goofy. There's no conspiracies going on here. Like, I don't get it. People are like, oh, what's Punk doing? Is he going to, is he going to WWE? No, I just think Punk is really good at marketing himself. Really good at getting people talking. It's provocative. It gets the people going, you know? I think he's good at that, and everybody fell into the trap. You triggered my trap card! That's what I think. He ain't going nowhere. He's with AEW. He's not leaving AEW. In fact, he's on his way back to AEW, most likely, for that Chicago show. So, pump the brakes on the CM Punk talk. But, he was back there. It really doesn't make sense why he would be back there, but stuff like this happens all the time time stop it get some help so all of you tranquilo relax yourself now let's get into the show monday night raw coming to you from chicago as always you know we don't go in order we talk about the big things first and then we keep it pushing all the way down one big thing triple h announces a new world heavyweight championship now first things first Nope. Don't know about this because Triple H earned it and he earned the acknowledgement instead of demanding. And listen, we want somebody who's going to fight it, who's going to defend this thing all over the world, who's going to be fighting for this title. Listen to me and listen to me close. This feels right now like a you can't beat Roman Reigns right now, title. So here's to third place. Not first or second place. Third place. Because Roman has the first and second place titles. And now this is a consolation prize to all the people that Roman already beat. Minus Seth Rollins. It's like, nope. I know you all can't beat him. So you can go fight for this over here because... We got big plans for Roman, and none of you guys can beat him anyway. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, don't worry about it. One more time for the people in the back. I'm not... It's just, that's what it feels like. Feels like a, you can't beat Roman Reigns title, so we're going to give you a consolation prize. How about this? Just have somebody go out there and beat Roman Reigns. How about that? That would be great. But we'll see what happens. So there will be a new world heavyweight champion at Night of Champions on May 27th. Who do you guys think is going to be the new champion? I don't know. They could go in many different ways. So we shall see. Next, we had Rey Mysterio versus Damian Priest. This was the main event of the show, and we had a hella, hell of a lot of. Uh, actually, no, that's for the other match. Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio, Damian Priest. In the middle of this match, Bad Bunny shows up, and then they go to commercial. Damian Priest cut a promo earlier saying that, listen. Bad Bunny wants to get I, I, Bad Bunny won at WrestleMania, but that was because of me. And you know what? We're friends. And as long as he stays out of my business, we'll remain friends. But when he wants to insert himself in my business, then I make it my business to put him through a table. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. He said, I don't go out there to Coachella and start dancing around and grabbing the mic. But yeah, he wants to come over here and get involved with my business. We're not having that. Stop it. Get some help. Shout out to Damian Priest. So during this Rey Mysterio fight, good back and forth, good back and forth fight with Damian Priest, Bad Bunny shows up <clears throat> and then he begins to come into the arena. Shortly after that, Rey Mysterio hits the 619. He's going for the frog splash and he gets whacked in the face with the chair. 
So Damian Priest wins by DQ, but then he goes to finish Rey Mysterio off. But here comes Bad Bunny down with the kendo stick. Wax him a good five or six times. And then Bad Bunny says, you know what? Cabron, me, and you, backlash, mano a mano. This is great. In Puerto Rico, mi casa. Shout out to Bad Bunny and all the Puerto Ricans out here. That's going to be one hell of a show in Puerto Rico. I, I fully I fully expect it to be. Perfect. But this is how the show went off the air. This was great. Shout out to Judgment Day. They're all great. Shout out to Damian Priest. He is also great. Looking forward to see what they can do moving forward at Backlash. I think they're going to shut it down because it's Bad Bunny. I might I might actually open the show with this. I might open the show with this. I don't think Bad Bunny's going to win, but I might unless in a street fight, no less. <laughs> so because it's a street fight, I think he might actually win. Because you know the Judgment Day is going to get involved. You know LWO is going to get involved. So street fight, he might actually got a shot. So we'll see what happens. What else happened on this show? Let's talk about the bloodline. We had Sami Zayn. We had Sami Zayn meeting up with Jay Uso in the back, and this was uh, after the Usos fought the LWO and won the match. With uh, it was a six-man tag, and there was a Samoan Spike hit Del Toro while he was while he was trying to do a coast to coast. Shout out to the Samoan Spike. Then they dedicated the win that they're going to get against Sami Zayn and KO to Roman Reigns. He's stupid. So if they lose, they're fucked. So what ended up happening is Sami met up with Jay. He said, Jay, what are you doing? What do you think he's going to do to you when you lose? <gasps> Excuse me. When you lose, because you will be losing. And then Jay told Jimmy, yeah, I met up with Sami. What do you think? What, what do you think will happen if we lose? Jimmy goes crazy. He's like, bro, you got to stop talking to him. He's done with, we're done with him. He's done with us. He made his choice. Get your mind and get your mind right because we need those tag titles. Cool. Then Jay goes to Sammy and says, listen, what's going to happen when KO, when you and KO lose? Because KO doesn't trust you. He don't like you. He just used you to get the undisputed tag titles. And you know what? He ain't forget about all the times you kicked him in the face because I was standing right there. Don't worry about my brother. Worry about yours. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? Excellent piece of storytelling here. Loved everything about all of these segments. All of these segments were great. They can go in such great directions because after that, you had KO talking to Sammy. And Sammy and KO is telling Sammy, listen, man, why do you even care? Why are you worried about them? We have to win to defend these tag titles. I don't know what's wrong with you. Get your mind in the game. And then Matt Riddle, of all people, shout out to him. Bro. Matt Riddle says, listen, bro. They said the same thing about me when I tag team with Randy, RK, bro. I know exactly what you're going through. Every week, everybody said he was going to RKO me. But you know what? He didn't. And we became tag team champions, bro. <laughs> Shout out to this brother, man. So after that, after that, that was the end of the, uh, basically all the segments with the Bloodline and KO and Sammy. But I am very much looking forward to seeing this rematch. KO and Sammy better beat them again. They better beat them again, and then we can see what happens because you never know. Randy Orton might show up and RK, RKO the hell out of Matt Riddle. Who knows? I don't know. But it looks like it's going to be a fantastic pay-per-view. I love this segment. This was actually one of the better things on the show with this uh, segment that was episode-wide. We had the Street Profits beating Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin after Montez hit uh, Cedric Alexander with a frog splash. Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, and Roquel Rodriguez beat Damage Control. Uh, Bailey got hit with the KOD. EO Sky was not having it. She was not happy. And she wanted, uh, she said she wanted Belair in the ring later in the show, which led to Bailey challenging uh, to a six woman tag match because 
They are going to implode, but EO is going to come out of this looking the best because Bailey is like, listen, I got myself another match. And listen, you don't got to fight her by yourself. It could be us three because I spoke to Adam Pierce and I'm trying to get the title. So when I get the title, we can have it. And EO is like, get the fuck out of here. She's not having that nonsense at all. We have Bronson Reed. He took out Austin Theory and Bobby Lashley after those two. Continued to fight on, but Theory, uh, Austin Theory. Nope. My man is losing some steam. <laughs> to me, he beat John Cena, huge win, but at the end of the day, and it is a huge win, but at the end of the day, they're not really doing anything with them. And instead of elevating him and the U.S. title, they made a heavyweight title for other people to fight for when they should be trying to fight for his title. But maybe they don't want to beat Theory yet. I don't know. It's all weird. They could have just elevated the U.S. title like they've been doing. But they don't want to do that. So it is what it is. Uh, those two had a pull-apart brawl. And Bronson Reed came and helped Austin Theory beat up Bobby Lashley. But then he took it upon himself to beat up Austin Theory anyway. So shout out to him. Let's clap it up for that. Mustafa Ali beat Chad Gable with a roll-up. Awesome. Cody Rhodes, who came out for a promo, he did his promo work. Balor interrupted him and said, listen, you needed somebody to have your back. And that person is me. Join the Judgment Day. Cody declined. And he said, you know what? Cody said, you know what? You think because I got hurt that I ain't medically cleared? Because I got hurt a couple of weeks ago? Oh, no. As of a couple of hours ago, I am medically cleared. So that's me and you have a good old-fashioned dust-up tonight. And they did in a very good, very good TV match by two constant professionals, Finn Balor and Cody. And this was good ahead of Brock Lesnar, uh, Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. Then we had Seth Rollins and Omas come face-to-face. -face. Nope. Get the fuck out of here! Stop it. Get some help. A match that nobody asked for. A match that nobody wanted. And Seth Rollins says, Oh, I'm going to continue to do what I always do. I'm going to get in that ring and give you the best fight of your life. Why do you have to give him the best fight of your life? Just say I'm going to go in there and kick your ass and ain't nothing you can do about it. Surprise, motherfucker. So I don't know. Omas came. Uh, Omas came in. He stood there. MVP talk for him. Not nothing bad here. It's just no one asked for this. Why are we getting this? No one asked for it. So it is what it is. But that was your Monday Night Raw review. Seth Rollins stuff going on. WWE title, uh, World Heavyweight title stuff going on. There's a lot going on in this company, so we'll see what happens. You got NXT tonight. You know, we're not reviewing NXT right now, but I will have more news for you tomorrow when it comes out. So, as for me, RJD, it's late here in New York, and I'm going to sleep. So, I will holler at y'all later. Peace.